Hi, my name is Lindsay Kathleen and I have congenital heart disease, also known as CHG. Now, a congenital heart disease actually happens when a child is in its mother's womb. For whatever reason, a different chromosome or something happened when the heart was forming, but it basically means that a child has a defect in their heart. The defect can be anything from missing a chamber or to a hole in the heart or the vessels not working. But whatever it may be, one in 100 babies actually have congenital heart disease. I myself didn't even know it was that common until I actually did some research. But for myself, I have a little bit more of a complicated case. I have four different things that are going on. And even though I've had this for 26 years of my life, uh, sometimes it's hard for me to remember. I kind of have to go in order or else I kind of forget, so you're going to bear with me. Um, I have tricuspid atresia. I have single ventricle which means I'm missing one of my ventricles, so I have three-fourths of a heart. A leaky mitral valve, so that's one of the main valves in your heart. And what happens is, the what's supposed to happen is the blood is supposed to flow a certain way, right? Well, with a mitral valve leak, it means it kind of regurgitates and sometimes goes the other way. Obviously an issue. And then also a transition of the major arteries. So you got your arteries in your heart and they'll cross-cross, so obviously it can't function. So I had my first open heart surgery when I was two months old. I had my next one when I was two years old, and then a revision when I was six years old. So I have not had any major surgeries since I was six, thank goodness. Um, when I was six years old, I also had a pacemaker put into me in my abdomen. To A pacemaker helps your heart regulate its beat. Sometimes um, elderly people get pacemakers as they get older. Uh, for me, I had to have one in order for my heart rate to be a certain way so I can function as a child. But like I said, I had my last one when I was six, and so from six to 18, I was fine. Totally fine, I was able to get my driver's license, I was able to be a part of theater, I even worked a part-time job at a restaurant. I had a very normal life. But the minute I left home, I left San Diego, and I went to Oregon for school, something happened. Um, my heart decided to not function for a little bit and do some crazy things, and so it ended up, I ended up coming back to San Diego to finish my degree and get my master's. So after that, I have been in education, the world of education, for a while, and I got an opportunity to move to Michigan and to work for the University of Michigan. And so from 18 to basically now, I've been totally healthy, except I had some minor surgeries, some checkups here and there, but everything's been great. So I decided to move to Michigan knowing that I was totally healthy. And I was very excited because I had the opportunity to work for this great university, and I felt like my career was finally taking off. It was finally going in the direction that I thought I wanted it to go. And so here I am, working at the university, and it's my fourth week on the job. Fourth week. And so I'm sitting there, I'm listening to this, taking it all in, and then I start to kind of feel faint, and I kind of feel like I'm sweating a little bit and shaking, and I was like, oh my gosh, something is going on, and I know what's going on. So I take out my phone and my stopwatch, and I put my two fingers to my neck, and I feel, and I st say start. I wait for a minute, and lo and behold, my heart rate was at 120 beats per minute. Yes, that is not okay. That is not good. Your resting heart rate is typically at 70. Um, so I was panicking not only because I had to go to the hospital right away in order to correct it, but I was panicking because I had to tell my employers one four weeks after starting that I had to leave work, go to the hospital because I have some heart problem right now. I was nervous because I never want to be that person that they feel sorry for or they think they can't handle certain things. And it's just not something you want to tell your employer on the first month of the job. But nonetheless, I had to because my health is the most important thing. So I go to my supervisor's uh, office and I sit down and I go, I'm having a bit of a problem. My heart's kind of not functioning. I did it very nonchalantly. Not functioning and I just need to kind of go to the hospital kind of. Sometimes it works out like this and I just need to kind of tweak it and whatnot. Um, so she kind of didn't really ask any questions. She's like, no problem, I'll take you. So there I was, and I'm at the hospital, the, the double doors open to the emergency room. I go up there and I tell them my situation, and they immediately take me back and start putting all the leads on, hooking me up to monitor, and lo and behold, 120 beats per minute, atrial flutter. I was experiencing atrial flutter. Atrial flutter is basically when your brain and your heart are kind of trying, they're trying to communicate on what heart rate you should be at. 
they are miscommunicating is what I, the best way I can describe it. And so your heart rate is all over the place. So mine was 120 beats per minute. Since I have the pacemaker, sometimes you can interrogate the pacemaker to make your heart function normally. So to get it out of that atrial flutter. So here I am working with these emergency doctors and my cardiologist from San Diego is on the phone. They're working together, trying to figure it out, trying to get my heart rate down to normal. Yet it wasn't happening. It, it did, that didn't want to do it. So the next thing, the only option was to cardiovert me. And cardioversion is where they take those paddles and they go to your heart, and that's what had to happen. So there I am, I'm 25 years old, back in the emergency room, heading over to the room where they're going to cardiovert me. So I, they hook me up to more monitors, my IV is in my hand, I'm looking at the screen, I see my heart rate going 120, I have a doctor holding my hand right now, saying it's going to be okay, you're going to go under for a few minutes, and then you'll be back with us in just a moment. So I go under, and then a few minutes go by. Of course, I don't even know how much time goes by because I'm out. And I wake, and my heart rate is down to um, 70 now. And so I was sad. I was frustrated, more frustrated and angry that, that here I am again. I left home thinking I was going to embark on this amazing journey because I was healthy. I am back in the hospital. But I'll pick up my bootstraps like I always do, and and just keep going forward. So I was discharged from the hospital, made a cardiology appointment that night, and was scheduled to see the cardiologist about two or three weeks after all this happened. But it hit nine days later, I having the same symptoms as I'm walking down the street with my friend on a Sunday afternoon, enjoying the last bit of sunshine in Michigan that we have here. And I, again, felt ner like shaking and sweating and not knowing what was going on and so I went again to the hospital and again my heart rate was at 120 beats and I was having atrial flutter and again they had to cardiovert me all within nine days. Nine days I was in the hospital and I was cardioverted. Obviously something's going on. Um, so at this point in time I was getting upset. I was getting confused again like I said and more so I was thinking, is this, is this where my heart kind of stops or falls off? Is this where I succumb to my condition and I'm going to be bedridden and I won't be able to do what I think that God wants me to do with my life? Is this, this it? Is this where I end at 25 years old and I'm done? That's what I was thinking. And I was scared and I'm still scared. So as I was going on, like I said, I pick up my bootstraps and that's what I've done my entire life. And I kept having chest pains. I kept not feeling okay. And so my doctors and I in San Diego decided that when I was home for Christmas break that I would have a cardiac catheterization procedure to kind of see what's going on in the heart and seeing if we can burn any scar tissue or work on the heart to make sure that I don't have these chest pains anymore and that I feel better. Uh, so that was scheduled. Now it's scheduled for December 20th. And in that time of scheduling it and now, I still was feeling not okay. And my pacemaker is actually due for a new one. The battery is going to go cahoots in about a few years. But since I've been having all this trouble, they've decided or we've decided that I'm going to have another surgery on top of my procedure when I come home. That's happening January 6th. So I'm going to have my cardiac catheterization in December. Then I'm going to have my surgery January 6th where they're going to replace my pacemaker and my leads. So right now, currently, my pacemaker is housed in my abdomen down here, having leads all the way up to my heart connecting it so the signal from the pacemaker to leads can get to my heart so I can have a normal heart rate. What they're going to do now is take the pacemaker, place it actually higher to my heart with the leads, new leads, and in hopes that I'll feel better. Now this is a bit more of a risky procedure because I have to now have my sternum open and they get access to my heart and I haven't had my sternum broken since I was six years old. So I'm walking into this on January 6th actually having no idea how I'm going to feel, what my emotions are going to be like, what's the recovery because I haven't had this big of a procedure since I was six years old. So I'm nervous and I'm scared and I, you know, you... I always think back to every procedure I've ever had and I know you're on the table and you see the shining lights and again you see your vital signs and your IVs in and all you can do is just 
trust trust and, and have faith that it's gonna work out and you're gonna come through on the other side. But this time I know that they're gonna they're gonna touch and feel my heart and have access to that. That's scary. So in these next few weeks and a month and a half, I'm gonna be going on a journey that I have no idea what I'm about to bark on embark on. And I want to share it with you because I want to share a knowledge and awareness that congenital heart disease does exist. And many people, like I said, don't know about it. And one in a hundred babies have a condition like myself. But the unique thing is, like I said, there's not one type of condition, there's many. And there's not one treatment, there's many treatments. And there's no cure. So people like me will live with it for our entire lives. And it's just revision surgeries to make sure that we have a great quality of life that we can have. So I'm inviting you to be along this journey, and I'm hoping that I can give inspiration to you. So whatever you're going through, any struggle or challenges you may be facing, know that there's always hope for you. I am so hopeful going into this procedure that I have faith that God will see me through this, and that this is just another one of my stories, another one of my journal entries that I can look back on and know that I've grown stronger from it. So join me on this journey. I'll be blogging, I'll be writing, I'll be video um, presenting videos to you. So again, I just check out my website. It's lindsaykathleen.com. If you have any questions during it or want information, my information is on the website. And again, I look forward to sharing this journey with you throughout the process in the next month and a half.